Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be big box store plant shopping at the Lowe's off of Preston Road in Frisco, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting the like button for this video, as well as subscribing to this channel if you haven't already with the notification bell on. I do one hour plant shopping videos and I would love for you to continue my journey of plant shopping so that way we can grow our community. But as you can see here, this is a Lowe's I like to frequent. I just got off of work after working 10 hours and I wanted to show you some plants today. And we can see that um, this is a nice, beautiful hang um, basket of lentils lantana flowers so lantana flowers these are for $19 and I believe 98 cents um, lantanas are great flowers that we can grow like out in the sun full sun they can tolerate really hot conditions and me being based out in North Dallas we get some hundred plus degree weather in the summer I know last year we had two months of no rain so we I'm really looking at plants that can really tolerate drought conditions hot conditions and that's what I would recommend for anybody that's growing outdoor plants it's to really Really look at your grow zone what your climate looks like and really being more aware of what plants you can grow in your climates otherwise if we go plants that are not necessarily fit for your grow zone or climate it becomes more of a challenge um, I believe that plants can bring us joy but when you are actually making you know when plants actually give you more of a chore versus joy that's when we really have to like reassess why we're growing certain plants um, I will touch base on a lot of outdoor plants as well as indoor tropicals to my plant foldies and if you are new to this channel I call my video um, subscribers and the community plant foldies um, there's a reason why I call them plant foldies originally this channel was an origami ASMR channel and obviously my love for plants I will touch base in um, my origami interests as well or try to um, kind of like put that in, in combination with my plants, but that is the reason why I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies, like you fold paper cranes and all of the things. But anyways, I'm going on a tangent. I did wanna show you how cool it is to start a raised bed. So for those that don't really um, have the space, you can always just create raised beds using two by fours and some of those, um, their cinder blocks to really um, create those quarters. I love um, raised beds, especially when you're growing um, herbs and vegetables and you know, with the majority of vegetables and herbs all of them will take full sun they need full sun to actually um do well for you in your um, growing conditions. And you can see that Lowe's, just like many big box stores, have many um, vegetables and herbs. I am currently growing a bunch and eventually I will show you guys um, what kind of vegetables and herbs I'm growing in my outdoor space. And as you can see here, we have the Island Bloom series. So I like the Island Bloom series by Costa Farms. These are basically tropical plants that can be grown um, for the season. Typically um, tropical plants grown outdoors for my grow zone, which which is 8B are more of an annual plant. So you're gonna have to replant them um, year after year. They just can't handle the cold weather. And you can see we've got many different types of rose bushes here. I love rose bushes. They prefer more of the heat. They definitely need full sun. You wanna make sure that you are cutting back the dead um, rose buds and you know rose flowers just because you wanna go ahead and promote more blooms. And over here, we've got a proven winners a mixed container of coleus plants and lantana here. I like the combination. And what's interesting is lantanas actually need to be in full sun in order to thrive. So I'm assuming that this coleus plant can take full sun because the majority of coleus plants that we are aware of are more so for like the shaded garden. And that's the thing about combination containers. You really need to make sure that whenever you're putting plants together, that they have the same lighting and care conditions, which will make it easier for you to grow them in containers. And I don't really know a lot about succulents and cactus, more so even the plant IDs. I do know that that is a barrel cactus. So my plant foldies, I know you have requested more succulents and cactus, so I'm doing my best to showcase more of those. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of vinca flowers. Love vinca flowers for the fact that they are more drought tolerant and they can take full sun. And we've got more containers here. And that's the thing I love about Lowe's and even other big box stores. We've got a lot of plants to choose from. So it really is based on what you're interested in if you like flowering plants if you like more foliage plants there's plenty to choose from i do find this um beautiful this sun patient so this one is for ten dollars and 97 cents and i get a lot of sun in my front yard because it faces the south so i get south facing sun 
And I'll tell you what, I definitely am considering growing some patients. Mostly impatients are known to be grown in the shade, but that one has been hybridized to where it can take full sun. I love the variegated leaves as well, which is really interesting considering most variegated plants tend to burn in full sun, but that one does not. It actually requires it. And with the holidays coming around, Memorial Day weekend coming around, they've got some flags here. So I like these containers of Vinca flowers. And then we can see over here as we walk into this Lowe's, um, we have some more of these container flowers. Um, I like that a lot. And then we're just going to pan over here and just kind of take a look at the outdoor space. Mind you, I will definitely show you the indoor tropical plants. So I hope you guys stick with me till the very end to really see that. Um, there are some really cool tropical plants that I found at this Lowe's. You might get excited with the new Costa Farm release, but you can see over here, we've got some full sun um, plants right here. I pan over here, beautiful dark foliage. Those are potato vines. They definitely need to be grown in full sun. And then we have this neon bright green um, plant here. I'm gonna just show you the plant ID here. This one's for $4.98. I've actually thought about a lot of these outdoor plants as being grown in containers and potentially being grown indoors. You know, when you think about an indoor plant, there's never really a true indoor plant. All plants come from some outdoor um, space. It just really depends on the lighting conditions and just the care that you give that plant. Some plants are more conducive to grow indoors than others. Like a lot of the tropical plants in areas we see, like for instance, if you were to grow this potato vine, which actually requires a lot of full sun, lots of heat, Growing them indoors can be a challenge because when you take them indoors, it's not necessarily the amount of light you can possibly give, which kind of compromises the plant's health. And when the plant's health is actually compromised, that means that they're more susceptible to pests. Like I would tell you um, spider mites. Like I know for a fact that whenever I grew some potato vines like this, they ended up getting spider mites. So um, there are some more plants and that's the reason why they always say that outdoor gardening or outdoor plants, that's because those plants are more so um, suited to be grown only in the outdoors. Um, and I, I found, out the, found out the hard way that not all plants are really meant to be grown indoors. I will push the envelope a little bit. Like for instance, I do think about growing caladiums indoors because caladiums, I um, kind of consider them as the more colorful version of an alocasia. This one right here is for $7.98. And I do love the different varieties of caladiums. Like look at this. I love the shape. I love the intense red and pink colors and that green border. Caladiums are meant to be grown more in the shaded area, which means potentially you can grow a caladium indoors because for the most part, most caladiums um, or just most plants that are grown indoors typically don't get the best lighting. I wouldn't say that everybody has that best like east facing lighting or south facing lighting. So I think that's more conducive to what you can grow indoors. And then here is some more geraniums here. These are the um more of like a maple a shape look at or ivy ivy shape um geranium so i know that you guys are looking for me to say hedra helix and for those that are new i mispronounced the actual way of saying hedera helix which is me which means it's the english ivy but this one actually has more of like an english ivy um foliage on it i think that's really cool and then over here, we've got some more hanging baskets. And can I say that if you ever go to Lowe's, you can get some really good pricing for hanging baskets. I am all about that. And you can see here, more plants that you can take a look at. I like the foliage texture on that particular plant. And then you can see even over here, we've got some more plants. Um, these are more of these hanging baskets. And I wanna pan over here because there's a, a particular plant that I think is really cool. And that is the, um, creeping jennies but let's take a look at a plant that i am always drawn to i don't know why i love um looking at this plant it just looks like a regular vegetable plant but this is what you call a variegated ajuga i actually bought two variegated ajugas one from walmart one from lowe's i am growing them in containers and i just love that subtle cream variegation that lavender color and that pink color i think it's absolutely stunning 
and they have grown well for me. What I like about this particular ground cover is it has versatile lighting conditions they can grow. I am currently growing these in full sun and when I have grown these in full sun, the variegation like the pinks, the purples, the lavenders, the creams are more pronounced. Um, these can also grow obviously in shade or at least for me, I hope to be able to propagate from them because it's starting to trail. It is more of ground cover and eventually I wanna try to grow these indoors to see if I can actually grow them. I have been experimenting with a lot of plants that, you know, you go to a big box store and it's not really labeled as a house plant. Um, there are a couple of plants, like obviously I talk about coleus plant. Those can be grown indoors. I recently bought a blood leaf plant um, and that one I'm propagating. Those can also be potentially grown indoors. So I am touching base on that. I love pink plants. I've been growing like the Rodeo oyster plant. I've been growing trade scanthias. All of those are currently growing outdoors in my front patio, which is south facing. But eventually I wanna grow some of these plants indoors. I will have to provide them with more like grow lights just to give that extra um, light supplement, but we'll see. And that's the thing about the plant foldy community and just the grow folds community. I want to touch base on many plants that we may not necessarily look at to grow indoors. Like, can we say that this creeping Jenny hanging basket is absolutely stunning. I love the combination of that dark foliage purple and also the green lime green color. I love that a lot. Now this is another ground cover plant that I am really considering growing. We'll see what that looks like. Um, I, it looks like a plant that would be easy to propagate in water. And as I pan away from here, this is just a really nice looking plant. What do you guys think? I mean, leave it in the comments and that's the thing. I always ask for comments in the comments section. I know a lot of us will chat on the chat. Love that as well. But if you can and you are listening to me talk about that in my videos, one way you can really support me is to really engage through the comments section. Ask me questions. Let me know what plants you're liking in the video. The more comments we have, the better that engagement is going to look. So um, I look forward to responding to you guys as well. And you can see there are some flowers on the spider plant. I don't have a spider plant in my collection, but I do find them um, endearing just just because they have little baby shoots that they push out. So they've got a bunch of hanging baskets here. So you can grow spider plants in like a shaded patio area, outdoors or indoors. I do find that even those quote indoor um, plants grow at a faster rate when they are grown outdoors in a shaded area. And that's the trick with my philodendron and all of my other house plants my monsteras i will grow them out in my back patio where it's shaded and they can get some indirect light and they grow a lot faster here is another plant for ground cover this is a um, variegated periwinkle or a vinca um, vine i like this a lot for six i mean four dollars and 68 cents this is another plant that i am growing in a container i actually have one that is even more variegated than this i am thinking about growing this as like a trailing plant indoors um, this is a plant that does need to be more in a shaded area and needs more like morning light in order for it to just really thrive it does not do well in full sun it will definitely burn but this is another plant that you would normally not think to grow indoors but it is a plant that i I am experimenting on growing it in a container and then possibly trying to grow that indoors and then over here is that lone hedra helix this is a hedera helix or an english ivy however you want to call it this is for four dollars and 98 cents you can see that it's got a different type of leaf shape i love english ivies um, and this english ivy actually is being marketed as more of like a ground cover outdoor plant English ivies don't really give you issues when grown outdoors. It's when you bring them indoors where they have those issues. And then you can see right here, this has some sport variegation. This is an um, Asian jasmine for $4.98. Look at that one stem right there that has variegation. I almost want to buy this plant simply to get a cutting off of that one var variegated stem to see if I can actually get more variegation. Like right there, that's all I need is that one cutting. Um, that's really cool. I don't know if that sport variegation would main, remain um, consistent because everywhere else they've got green, but that is a really cool sport variegation on that or Asian um, jasmine. Really cool ground cover. There is one that's like the tricolor. And then over here, we got some more ornamental grass right here. Let's take a look at the price for this particular ornamental grass, $4.68. Um, this one almost reminds me of like a spider plant. 
I like that a lot. And you know, these are ornamental grasses that need to be more so in partial sun or shaded areas. And then over here, we've got some fern. And then obviously everybody, every plant fold is favorite. And that is the Hedra Helix. I love me some Hedra Helix. Or the correct way to say is Hedera Helix. So either way, I know that I'm not really saying it the correct way, but it's one of those plant foldy um, classics. Um, for those that have been following this channel for the last five and a half months, um, you already know that the English Ivy or the Hedra Helix is here to stay. One plant that I like to look at are all of these begonias. I think they're beautiful and easy to care for as well. Look at the blooms on this particular begonia right here. I love the colors of it. And this is a color combo for $39.98. This would make a perfect patio um, container. It would be a container that can give you a little bit more blooms and just more color to a space. And I love that big box stores really have some combination containers. So for those that actually struggle with like making combination containers, you can go to a big box store and buy that. And I wanna show you a couple of shrubs so this shrub right here, I really like just because of the variegation. It's one that I've actually considered putting into my landscape. This one needs more um, light as well to get that variegation. Although it says it's shade, I still think that if you can give it a little bit more light, um, it's going to give you better um, coloration with that variegation. And then over here, we've got this purple plant right here. That's a Chinese fringe um, bush. And then also these Nandinas right here. This is the lemon lime Nandina. Love that neon color. Now this one also needs to be in full sun to really get that neon yellow color. And then over here, this is this can do in shade or sun. This this is one of those purple daydream ones or that's what is being called by Southern Gardener. I love that um, bush as well. And this one has more of like a cascading trailing effect on it. Um, this bush I used to grow out in my front landscape, but we had a really hard freeze in Texas and it just took out the bush. I do like the dark foliage. And then this one also is a nice plant, variegated shrub. That one also needs to be in full sun. But as you can see, plant foldies, I not only show you guys like indoor plants, but also these outdoor plants so a lot of these plants are what we're gonna see we're just gonna look at some of the outdoor garden so if you're interested in gardening and you're interested in landscaping the first part of this video is gonna definitely be about outdoor spaces now don't worry if you um stick it to the the rest of the video I will show you the outdoor trop the not the outdoor the indoor tropical plants plant foldies but I just love highlighting all of the outdoor plants because I love gardening as well and you can see over here, this is an oleander flower. Now, this one is for $19.98. One thing I will say about oleander is that they do need full sun. Watch out um, as they are very toxic. Their foliage is very toxic and poisonous. So you don't really want children playing around it. You don't want your, um, your furry friends playing around it because it is a toxic plant. It's poisonous. And then over here, we've got some type of juniper. I love how it's um, already like curated to where it has like a specific specific shape and then over here we've got some trellises of some um, jasmine flowers very fragrant flowers I love jasmine flowers where I am from and my uh, my family's from the Philippines we have what they call the sampaguita or the Arabian jasmine as the national flower and over here we've got some cordyline tea plants so I love Hawaiian cordyline tea plants these are by Costa Farms and with cordyline tea plants you can grow them in full sun and they will get better variegation and this one right here is a really cool cordyline I always almost think that this is more of a dracaena marginata but this one is a cool looking cordyline um, cord plant Definitely um, the leaf shape um, is a little bit more unusual than the typical cordyline. This one is a little bit more narrow, but I really love the burgundy color of this particular plant. This one is for $10.97. Some people will attempt to grow cordyline plants indoors, but trust me, when you bring a cordyline tea plant indoors, they don't always do as well. They end up getting spider mites because again, they're not necessarily getting the best conditions to grow, which makes them more susceptible to spider mites. And I'll tell you, Spider mites are the death of any type of um, plant collection as well as like just pests in general. You know, I talk about pests and I talk about how like pests can really take over a 
an entire like um, indoor space. So we just have to be really diligent about that. You know, really know that your pest control protocols, like for instance, if you were to buy a plant and say you've been growing a plant outdoors and you decide to bring it indoors, know that there could be potential pests harboring in the outdoor space and bringing them indoors. And the problem is when you grow plants outdoors, there are natural predators that can control pests. But when you bring them indoors, they don't necessarily have natural, um, you know, pest control um, like like for instance predators like for instance you don't have just random ladybugs going around and um, killing aphids so that's the thing about bringing plants that were growing indoors back um, and growing bringing plants that were growing outdoors is what I meant to say and then bringing them back indoors you really have to be careful with that there should be a quarantine period and you talk about plants that need to be grown outdoors I'm pulling up all of these um, croton plants so sometimes you will actually a lot of times you will see the croton plant being marketed as a plant that can grow indoors it really is not a plant that will do well indoors it's one of those plants that needs to be in full sun or a lot of sun outdoors Croton plants are a little finicky and it's really because of the lighting conditions. Um, I know that my croton plant is in full sun for at least eight hours a day and it is thriving. I want to pan over here though and just show you all of these beautiful container plants. Um, plant folies, let me know in the comments if you actually enjoy growing um, container gardens. I think they're really nice. It depends on really your space. So if you have a smaller space, maybe container gardening is better for you. Like um, right over here, they've got some more containers of different types of um, canna lily mixed with like lantana mixed with um, different types of coleus. Coleus are one of my favorite plants to grow because they're so easy. Like I tell you, um, coleus plants have different types of colors, shapes, they're inexpensive plants. And you know, we talk about plants and just plant gardening and you know, plants are very, or cannot, I say very expensive. Plants can be a little bit more on the pricey side, especially when you're an avid collector like me. I love all plants. Like for instance, I am so tempted to buy me this variegated, Bougainvillea. Look at how beautiful some of the new growth comes out with that pink and then that white cream variegation. It pushes out beautiful magenta flowers. Sometimes you can get ones that are in white, but this one is known as a Bougainvillea um, Raspberry Ice. Um, it's for $24. And then you can see these are just the green Bougainvilleas. The Bougainvilleas unfortunately can't grow in the landscape long term for my grow zone, which is 8B, um, because we get freezes and they just don't handle very cold weather. Now, if you live out in California, I've seen beautiful walls of them, especially at Carmel by the Sea in California. I love bougainvillea walls. I wish that North um, Texas could grow them. Um, the one plant that has a lot of flowering that we can see though are crepe myrtles. I do intend to show you a lot of the crepe myrtles and they've started to bloom in North Dallas. There's a specific crepe myrtle park that I would like to feature in one of my future videos. So not only am I gonna do some plant shopping videos, I wanna kind of diversify different types of um, plant whether it's a botanical garden, somebody's garden, or some type of feature, I wanna kinda start bringing that alongside with you guys. And also just maybe some more daily blogs. I utilize a lot of my plant shopping videos to really just talk about some of my thoughts while showcasing you guys' plants. So for the plant foldies that have gotten to know me, you can ask me questions in the comment section. I've thought about actually doing a live stream where I'm sitting down and maybe just chatting and asking. You can ask me questions. I might be doing some repotting or maybe even featuring a specific plant, talking about its care tips or maybe having a feature where I'm literally doing it live versus actually having an edited video. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like to have like a live premiere live stream versus just a live premiere i'd like to really know your thoughts about that and as you can see i want to know your thoughts about this cordyline hawaiian tea plant beautiful pink um, coloration i do love this plant my grandmother grows these so easily i want to collect more cordyline plants i saw a couple of cordyline plants so there is a local plant shop that i went to and featured last week it's pita's planters out in dallas and um, Lupita, who is the owner, mentioned to me that since that video, there were a couple of local plant foldies that visited that, that plant shop because they saw the video. So I'm really excited to feature all of these local plant nurseries. Um, Pita's Planters, I am planning on actually doing a feature. They're getting another plant restock um, this week. So hopefully everybody will tune in. I love the planters. I loved all of the, um, the crafts that she has. And it's just a really nice plant shop. And although I am 
Instagram featuring these big box stores. I love Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. We get some um, cost effective pricing. We get some beautiful succulents like this. I do believe that um, we should um, support local plant businesses, small businesses, because when it comes to like the actual plant, I will say without a shadow of a doubt, you will get more of a healthy plant coming from a local plant nursery, a plant shop, a small business, because there's a little bit more care that's taking into account for that plant versus a big box store. And again, I don't want anybody actually interpreting me as like bashing a big box store, because clearly I love big box stores. I'm literally in a big box store every day. I think they're more accessible, but if you have some good plant nurseries, I would definitely do a combination of both. And the crazy thing about it is since I've been doing plant shopping videos, my plant foldies, I have started to really memorize what particular plants are sold for whatever price. So I'm able to actually do some like plant, some plant pricing um, comparisons. And I will say while we might assume that a big box store has more cost effective pricing, local plant nurseries have that too. But let me get off of my rant on that and actually talk about the plants that I'm showing you. So as you can see here, a lot of you plant foldies have asked me to show you guys more of the plant. Um, succulents and cactus and Lowe's always delivers with amazing um, varieties of cactus and succulents and also crassula or jade plants. This one is for $24.98. This is the golem. Um, jade plant i actually want to collect jade plants because they remind me of my childhood my grandmother and my mother used to grow them and they were super easy and i really like this variegated one as well here this is really easy to propagate you can see that this one has actually fallen apart truthfully i can ask maybe ask one of the staff if i can have that little cutting but i'm going to leave it be um there is this term called prop lifting um, i saw a how to get free plants video on youtube it had like two million views and the um the content creator mentioned how she would go to a big box store she would find some broken limbs from like succulents or certain plants that normally would just get swept away and thrown in the trash but she actually will ask the big box store staff if she can take them home so obviously if you ask them and they say it's okay that's how you get free plants according to that one particular youtube video and it's interesting because succulents are easy to propagate you can usually propagate them from just a little leaf a stem that broke off you can just stick it on top of some soil and a lot of succulents will just root you just have to miss them you don't even have to really bury the actual cutting or the leaf um, that's something that i would like to experiment you know plant propagation is something that brings a lot of joy in me um, that's the reason why i love um, coleus plants um, because they're easy i have never seen a plant that performs so well with literally taking a small cutting it could be the smallest cutting and you can put it in water or soil and it will take root and i just find that so exciting so i am excited to be able to show you guys my coleus plant collection i want to make sure that my front porch is ready for that so if you want me to show you guys my uh, my personal plants i'm giving you guys glimpses of it please 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 leave a comment in the comment section make sure you are hitting the like button and i will be more prone to do that and you can see right here, this is another um, container plant. This one looks like it has one of those sun coleus plants. You can see right here, um, I think this is the spice curry coleus plant. And then we got another type of coleus plant right here. So you can see how versatile coleus plants are. And I do apologize, but I am not really sorry if I'm talking about coleus plants in pretty much all of my videos. It is really one of those things that with my plant, um, content or my plant channel I do I am open to like suggestions and really trying to show you guys all the different plants but when it comes down to it I want to really be authentic about what plants I want to share what plants I'm passionate about it's easier for me to be able to talk about plants with more enthusiasm and excitement versus just trying to feed a, um, a, a, a trend so while like coleus plants really aren't really considered like a collector plant or a house plant I just, for some reason, there's something that draws me to them. And really with a lot of the plants as well, my plant foldies, I can talk to you about how they just bring me so much joy. Like we can look at this lantanas. Now that I've seen that lantanas perform well in hot weather like Texas, I am all about lantanas. And when I look at my garden in my backyard, I have seen so many beautiful flowers from lantanas and they're very low maintenance. And that's the thing with plants. I think I'm more drawn to plants that are a little bit low maintenance, easy care plants, 
Coleus, for instance, are pretty much easy care plants. The only drawback is they are very thirsty plants. But since I'm not growing them indoors, I'm very guilty in terms of when I water my plants. I really don't water my plants indoors. And, you know, I always wonder why my plants start to decline in health. It's because I haven't watered them for three weeks and I've just been a bad plant parent. But whenever you grow plants outdoors, it's easier for me to do that because I can take a hose and spray them down and they're good to go. You can't necessarily do that indoors. You have to individually water the plants, you know, take the saucers that catch the water and drain it. So it's more of a um, chore. But this one is a plant, for instance, that I also want to go ahead and grow in a container and possibly grow indoors. I love that yellow or green on green variegation. And on top of that, this blooms. It has yellow blooms. Like, look at how beautiful that is. I will say with Proven Winners plants, they are typically a very healthy selection of plants. I love Proven Winners because they have their own hybrids. This one takes full sun, and you can even see right over here, these are some Calibritroa um, for $6.98. These are super bells. This is the lemon one, but look at how beautiful these are. These look like miniature petunias, but obviously they are a different flower. And I'm gonna pass by over here all of those combination containers. We have some caladiums here, beautiful caladium containers. I am obsessed with caladiums as well. They're easy to grow. They need to be more so though in, um, in a shaded area, but I love the look of caladiums. I have a couple of caladiums, pink caladiums because I love pink plants. Anything pink variegation, pink in general, pink stems, pink leaves, pink whatever. I am about that. That is one of the plant colors that I'm about. I also love like neon green colors. I love dark foliage colors. I like white flowers. I found that white flowers are very um, elegant. And here it is. I don't, I, you know, I want to show you some coleus plants. So this is one coleus plant I don't necessarily have. So I will be buying this today. You already know if I see a coleus plant, I will buy it just because I want to add to my collection. This one is for $4.98. Notice how there's branching. There's three branches there. It's because it was trimmed back. And then whenever you trim back a, um, a coleus plant, it will at least do two to three new um, growth points and shoots to where it continues to get bushy. I like that a lot. I do like that this one looks to have like some white variegation. I feel like it, it will get better variegation as it matures and it gets more more um, light. And you can see this is another um, coleus plant that I already have. I like that this just has green edges and then that white cream in the middle. Easy to care for plant. This is a plant that I can literally take three to four cuttings from that plant alone and produce more plants. So the whole viability of just being able to get more free plants through coleus cuttings is amazing like this one right here beautiful um, maroon color and you know it has two shoots but if you cut it back it'll do maybe four to five shoots and you'll get even a bu bushier plant there is one coleus plant that i am going to show how to train into a coleus tree um, if you have instagram please follow me at growfolds but there are a couple of instagram accounts from europe that i follow and when i say they are growing coleus plants um, co full coleus trees that are about three to four feet tall indoors it is absolutely stunning and that's the, the interesting thing about certain plants in europe they call these palette leaf plants i would say it's because they look like paint different colors like this one right here is a different type of coleus plant this is what you call a kong coleus which basically can get leaves as big as your leaves they're the giant varieties now those kong coleus definitely cannot take full sun um, so you have to really know what what lighting conditions they can take. I prefer full sun type of coleus plants because then I don't have to worry so much about whether I'm going to burn them. They're a very thirsty plant. That is the only drawback about coleus plants. You literally have to water them um, once a day. I have to water them twice, once in the morning and definitely once in the late afternoon evening for them to really stay hydrated. They will um, get wilty and um, crisp up and potentially die if you let their soil dry out completely. That that is the only drawback and that's where the concern comes was when i actually bring some of my coleus plants in whether i'm going to be able to sustain that watering regimen and you can see over here we've got a bunch of larger outdoor tropical plants um, these are like the ficus lorata or fiddle fig leaf i love fiddle fig leaf tree at least the one i have is hasn't been finicky it does have a notorious reputation for being a fi um, fickle type of plant um, but what i've discovered about um, ficus plants in general is 
they really do thrive in high light conditions so a south facing window is really what they need and they enjoy consistency and what i mean about plant consistency is making sure that if you're going to water them once a week you water them once a week versus letting that consistency go i've noticed that like a fiddle fig leaf will drop its leaves if you say you know if you the watering conditions stop like if you water it once a week and then all of a sudden you water it um, once a month, um, it just starts to become unhappy. And even the placement of a fiddle fig leaf, if you bring it in your home, it'll probably drop some leaves because it's acclimating, but you don't really want to move it around a lot. It does not like movement. So that's the whole thing about consistency with your ficus plants, particularly with the um, fiddle fig leaf or ficus lorata. And as you can see here, I am always drawn to Echeveria. And as you can see, I am starting to get a little bit more familiar with my succulents. Um, I like these Echeverias because look at this one right here. Isn't that beautiful? I love how the edges of the leaves or the borders have like that neon um, pink color around it. Um, with Echeverias or succulents, again, you really want to try to avoid getting the leaves or the, um, the foliage wet because if the water stays on it too long, it will definitely rot the leaves. This one is interesting though because this looks super dehydrated for a crassula or jade plant and then look at this cool looking cactus right over here now plant foldies if you are watching this and you are a cactus or a succulent lover i would also like to know what type of like cactus or succulents you're growing which one is your favorite what would you recommend for me to grow Particularly, I love Aeonium um, succulents. Those are beautiful. I will be ordering this really cool looking pink one called the Aeonium um, pink, um, pink Witch. That is such a really cool looking Aeonium. But anyways, and then the sun is starting to go down. Um, you know, I do a lot of my plant shopping videos either on my day off, which is Tuesday. I try to get as much footage as possible, but also right off of work, I'll try to film. And you can see right here, somebody took one of the other succulents. I think that that's really cool. These are in four pack succulents. You can actually buy a bunch of these smaller succulents and create yourself a succulent arrangement. Um, I would say for me, if I'm going to go grow succulents, I would really find some more of the more uncommon rare ones, especially the ones with really cool pink variegation. When I went to PlantCon 2024 in Houston, I saw a succulent cactus um, seller that just specified on, you know, that specialized with that and there were some really cool succulents i learned a couple of things from her and speaking of plant con 2024 plant con 2024 will be in dallas on august 31st september 1st if you are a plant foldy that intends to go there if you're going to fly in or whatnot i would really love to connect with you in person i know some of you guys have asked me to do a face reveal and it's not that i necessarily want to do a face reveal part of it is the allure of you know trying to figure out who is grow folds i'm literally just another average person that just likes to talk about plants but i would love to meet with you guys in person i've met with steven who has created a new youtube plant channel called i lift plants so if you haven't watched this youtube channel plant foldies please support another plant foldy trying to do some more plant content for us go to i um, lift plants that is his youtube channel but going back to plant con i would love to meet up with any local plant foldies um, i know travis you are um, going to be coming to plant con 2024 I would recommend buying the early bird tickets, which means you can get to the, um, the the vendors and booths an hour early so you don't have to like rush and fight the crowd. I definitely am going to do that because I want to have more time to film um, the plants without having to dodge a lot of people in the videos. You already know I try not to get people in the background just to respect people's privacy. And over here, we are now inside and I will give it to Live Trends. Live Trends has some amazing plants. And when I mean amazing plants, they have really pushed the envelope with like self-watering planters, the types of plants that they have. Like right over here is in a self-watering planter with a philodendron bilitia. And I would say, I wish it was bilitia. It's actually a philodendron um, brantiana, beautiful silver foliage in a self-watering planter. And this is a classic um, Epipremnum arium jade pothos, and you can see that it is in a self-watering planter. I love the um, the planters of Live Trends. They have some very modern, sleek planters. And the jade pothos, this green one, is the most vigorous and fastest growing jade pothos, or just pothos plant in general. You can see that it's already starting to trail. You can take lots of cuttings from this, stick it in water, and you can see that it will grow. And you can see that there's a living plant 
plant roots, moisture wick, and a water reservoir, and that's how it works. Um, I love self-watering planters, especially for somebody who doesn't really water their plants often. All you have to do is literally fill the re water reservoir, and the wick will actually pull that water up to the soil and keep your um, plant watered. And I think that's a really easy way to take care of plants. And then here is another Epipremnum arium neon pothos. I love that as well. If you notice the neon pothos right next to the jade pothos, there is definitely a big contrast in the colors i have thought about taking a bunch of neon pothos cuttings a bunch of like jade pothos cuttings and putting it in a mixed planter so i have like neon and green um vining that would be something that i would like to do at some point neon pothos is one of my favorite pothos as well honestly i'm just gonna go out um, and say that i love all pothos i i would try to narrow down my favorite pothos if i had to narrow it down to a favorite pothos it would either be like a manjula pothos or an enjoy or a global green um so yeah like those would be my top three over here is a Dracaena tornado in a hydroponic situation. So for those that don't know what hydroponic is, and I always assume that we have some new viewers and subscribers, um, hydroponics is basically growing a plant, and I'm struggling to get this one out, in straight water. So it's just all water versus growing them in like a soil substrate, a LECA substrate, a pond substrate, a perlite substrate. It's literally growing in water. And I do find that plants that are growing in hydroponic situations may grow a little bit slower, but for plants that require a lot of water, and I will say spathophyllum peace lilies, calatheas, which are very finicky about their watering, and even, I wouldn't even say aglonemas, but I have converted aglonemas to where they're just growing in a bowl of water. It makes the care much easier. And then over here, live trends, I wanted to feature all of these beautiful planters. This one is a um, syngonium of some sort. I do love pink plants, and this is another pink syngonium. Syngoniums are very easy to grow. They do tolerate lower light conditions, but when you give them lower light conditions, they tend to be a little bit more leggy versus is um bushy and then over here look at this the 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 shape of this uh, particular planter this is a red marantha right over here by live trends and this is another plant that is only for $14.98 they have beautiful planters and I really think that's the reason why you pay just a little bit more but if you are a minimalist or a, somebody who just wants like one desk plant this is a really nice plant to pick now this one is a ficus elastica ruby for $14.98. The only thing that I'm not a fan of with live trends, and I've said this before, is the, the fake moss topsoil. I don't really like that just because I feel like when you get it wet, the top, it harbors more moisture to where if you had like fungus gnats, fungus gnats could lay their eggs there and then the, the, the surface just stays a little bit wetter and that could actually cause like root rot. Over here is one of my favorite types of calatheas. I have this one growing in hydroponic and it's doing very well for me. This is a calathea rospicta. Love that um, purple tone about it. Dark foliage plants are amazing. Um, I love those. I don't know. I just love those plants. And I do don't... I. I would say I don't really mind the um, the texture of some of these live trend planters. Um, I do like more of the modern look. And when I say modern look, I love just simple, um, not so shiny glazes on planters. I like more neutral tones. I love terracotta pots. I think they're classic and they're beautiful. And I'm going to refer back to PETA's planters. If you are watching this video and you haven't watched PETA's planters nursery tour, you will see what I mean about my plant aesthetics when it comes to planters. Really like the modern vibe about it. And you know, right now I'm going to shout out Target. If you shop at Target, Target actually has planters, um, the threshold varieties on sale for 30% off. If you do an order pickup or an online digital sale, I I would definitely do that it is a really good deal and they are very versatile planters but as i pan away from here you can see that live trends is really got a lot of beautiful planters and plants are usually very healthy and then now this is so exciting so i remember going to costa farms um in instagram and they mentioned how they were doing a test for tiny plants and what i mean by tiny plants is basically these are in two inch starter planters like look at this this is a tiny plant for three dollars and 33 cents this is a ficus elastica shivriana really nice um you know starter planner it always reminds me of like green escapes which is an um, actual etsy where they sell starter planners like this 
I would tell you these are for three three doll three for ninety um ninety nine ninety nine. So you can get three plants for nine ninety nine, or just spend three dollars and thirty three cents. Like this one right here is a tiny plant, and I like that a lot. So if you really want to just be more cost effective and save some money with your plant budget, you can just get these tiny plants. And I'm glad that it's starting to show up more so at um, big box stores because I wouldn't mind getting that. Honestly, I'm going to buy me another Ficus Elastica Shivriana because that's not a bad price at all for a starter plant. And you know what? It is to the point where I want to just start with more inexpensive plants. Like this one right here, I'm not 100% sure what this type of plant is. I'm going to assume it's a philodendron of some sort. Somebody please leave in the comments um, what type of plant that is. And look at how cute these, um, these these, uh, snow white waffle plants so like i ended up killing my snow white waffle plant because i didn't water it as um well but i may end up just buying this tiny plant and maybe just creating a small terrarium now i have some um some lamps that i actually lamp bases that i can create into a a terrarium i will actually feature that i actually have one that has just leca and a bunch of like global green pothos cuttings and it's doing very well but i'm gonna probably buy that particular ficus shivriana um just because it's for three dollars and 99 cents you can see this is a shiflera moondrop and it's actually a pretty big shiflera moondrop for three dollars and 33 cents i am excited to show you guys tiny plants by costa farms it looks like that um, they're starting to get a bunch of it. It is innovative design because you can create like um, different types of terrarium settings or you can just start them as a starter planter. Like what I would do is if it's in a two inch planter, maybe um, upsize it and repot it into a four inch planter. And that's the thing about planters and repotting. Remember when you're repotting a plant, you don't want to go too big of a size up. You typically want to repot a plant. If it's like a four inch planter, the highest you should go is maybe a six inch planter. And what I mean by the, the size, it's really the diameter um, of the, the actual planter. And then over here, we've got another beautiful Epipremnum Arium Neon Pothos. This is by Costa Farms for um, $20.48. Or actually, now that that one's actually sixteen ninety eight, and then these are fourteen dollars and ninety eight cents. These are by Urban Jungle. Love this Epipremnum Arium. Enjoy. And again with enjoy it is a slower growing um pothos plant but needless to say it is a beautiful plant because it has some high variegation contrast so you've got the green and then the white cream variegation it is a plant that doesn't necessarily revert and then right here we've got an epipremnum panatum cebu blue love that silvery blue foliage on it and this is a plant that is endemic to my home country which is the philippines um you see a lot of these in the cebu island so that's probably why they call it the cebu blue epipremnum Epipremnum panatum. Um, it is better if you grow this up a totem pole because the leaves will get larger and will also fenestrate. And then the term fenestrating is basically the plant is actually splitting its leaves. And the reason why it um, does that is because as it grows up like a tree or some type of um, wall, it's giving a more ability to give more light for the lower, um, lower uh, leaves, the juvenile leaves in the ground. And over here, this is a cool looking, very minimalistic um, planter by Live Trends. This is another type of Sansevieria braided version. Really look um, looks super cool. These are also for $14.98. But Live Trends, I have to hand it to Live Trends. And I think I'm going to do some more reels on Live Trends. So for those that are not um, following me on Instagram, my Instagram name is at Growfold. Follow me there because then you can actually send me direct messages. I know some of you plant foldies have created accounts to be able to communicate with me. I appreciate you, Alfred, who is one of my um, plant foldies in Canada. He sends me photos of his of particular plants, sends me videos of um, his plants. So I encourage that. I really love that engagement with each and every one of you guys. Our plant community is so positive and so welcoming. I'll notice that during a live premiere chat. And if you are watching this um, premiere live, this evening please do not be shy to say hello everybody is so welcoming you can ask questions and just really interact with people i will be creating a facebook page for our um, plant foldy community our growful community this coming weekend so stay tuned for that 
And then you can see over here though, I have been pulling a lot of these um, live trends and urban jungle plants. This is an interesting Peperomia obtusifolia, but notice how it's just more green on green variegation. I like that as well. Sometimes you'll see this with more of like that cream or white variegation, but the green on green variegation is beautiful as well. That is by Live Trends. And all of these very sleek, modern looking planters are self-watering planters like that. Epipremnum panatum, or not Epipremnum arium, Marble Queen Pothos was stunning. You can see this is a Calathea dotty right over here in a self-watering planter. I do think that Calatheas do better with self-watering planters because then you don't have to worry so much about the watering. This is a plant that I saw this Alocasia dragon scale. Um, I saw maybe two to three weeks ago when I visited it here. I'm glad that it's still alive, but it looks like some of the soil has gone. I would possibly ask if they can discount that because Lowe's does clearance out plants. And then sometimes the plants, they just need a little tender love and care. That one's just lost a lot of its soil. And you can see that this place also has Philanopsis orchids. And the thing about Philanopsis orchids is it is a common plant to see at a big boss store. Lowe's has quite a bit of um, Philanopsis orchids. If you're going to ask me which store sells the Philanopsis or just orchids in general, um, I would say Trader Joe's, which is a grocery store that I love shopping for plants for. Trader Joe's actually has some really good plant pricing, specifically with their orchids, and they offer different types of orchids as well. And you can see here, we've got a jungle full of ficus lyrata. And then I'm just gonna pan over here and also show you some more of these plants. So you can see this is some type of fern in a hanging basket. I love that the leaves has like that texture of fish scales, really nice looking fern. I'm not necessarily um, drawn to fern, but if I am gonna add a fern, it's gonna definitely be like a hurricane or a um, some type of tornado fern. I think I like the shape of it. So we'll, we'll just have to see about that. Here is a Pachira aquatica, but just the stump or a money tree. I really like the look of this one. This has more of a bonsai look about it. It looks like they've got some rocks. I don't really like the fake moss, but it is a cool looking um, stump right there. I prefer the Pachira aquatica more so in a stump form versus like a braided form. I just feel like it's more natural looking and it's just really cool. Now, Pachira aquatica in the wild can get up to 60 to 80 feet tall, so it can become a very large plant. Obviously, in indoor spaces, it's not going to get that size, but it's just quite interesting, the maximum size. Here is an example of an alocasia with spider mite damage. You can see that the leaves are yellowing. That's not a good look. And then as I pull this particular plant right here, this is a Homolomena shelby, and that is a tongue, you know, tongue twister homolomena homolomena um i said it right this is for 14 dollars 98 that's a really cool looking plant but it's right next to an infested um spider mite um plant so i would not buy that that is um not what i would do here is a ficus lyrata or a fiddle fig leaf for 14 dollars 98 again by urban jungle that's what you want to be more cognizant about is whenever you're buying plants like this beautiful alocasia i'm i'm surprised that all of the beautiful alocasia have been sold i'm happy about that because there was five um, that i saw i bought two and this is like the last one beautiful um alocasia i don't know if this is an alocasia poly or is it an alocasia watsonii but it is a plant that i hope somebody will buy since there's that other alocasia that already has spider mites but whenever you go big box store plant shopping if you find a plant right next to a plant that has pests, I would honestly refrain from buying the plant just because the potential of that plant spreading those pests has probably already happened. And whenever you buy a plant at a big box store, like say you get this hanging basket here, I would definitely spray the plant with insecticidal soap, some type of neem oil spray. Now plant foldies, you know that I've shown you guys how to make the plant foldy mist, which is basically a DIY, um, plant spray that I make using cold pressed neem oil, rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and a drop of um, dish soap. I spray that on all my plants and that pretty much eradicates a lot of the pests. I do that frequently and whenever I buy a plant, like say this hanging basket of like beautiful syngonium, I would spray the tops of the leaves, the bottoms of the leaves, the crevices of the stems, the top um, surface of the soil, the bottom of the drainage of the pot just to try to kill any potential pests. I would quarantine the, the plant away from my main collection for at least two to three weeks just to prevent that. Now, mind you, even though you do quarantine, 
quarantine and preventative for pests, it is always natural and will happen that you will get pests. So that's where it comes into the whole plant chores. I have struggled with plant chores because I have been so busy with work. Like, you know, imagine being in a manager position where you are literally working for 10 hours, you know, every other weekend off. Um, and then your day off is like on Tuesday. Um, and then balancing YouTube. I'm not complaining, but it's the reality of it. And then that's the fact that I have to figure a way to balance out my routines. So you'll notice that maybe there are times where I'm not able to upload a video. Um, and I feel bad because honestly, the videos bring me a lot of joy. I don't think of this as a chore. I feel like this is part of my daily routine. It's really plant therapy for me because I get to share plants. I get to talk about plants for an hour. And shockingly, you guys are still enjoying and finding some type of value with me talking about plants so i love that a lot that one that i just picked up is a hoya carnosa crimson um, princess 16 dollars 98 and then over here we've got a teddy bear vine plant love that and then we've got a kokedama um philanopsis orchid and we've just got several hanging baskets here. I don't I'll have a lot of hanging baskets. I do find them fun. I just don't want to drill a bunch of holes in my uh, my my home, though, to be able to grow hanging baskets. Um, but it is really cool to display them. I do have a variegated string of hearts that I found at Lowe's for $12.97, as well as Walmart. And those are doing fabulous. I they, they are definitely hanging. And check this out. This is an anthurium of some sort by Live Trends. I don't know what particular anthurium this is. Beautiful beautiful plant. I have not many anthuriums. I only have the blooming anthuriums and they're also growing in hydroponic in just straight water. Here is a beautiful um, neon pothos again. Look at the leaves on that. Now remember to get that yellow leaf or the neon color. You have to give it a lot more bright and direct light. Otherwise it tends to be more green versus that yellow. So you know definitely grow them in a higher light condition if you want to really elevate that neon color. Really um, highlight that. But as you can see here, any big box store, especially um, um, Lowe's, not Walmart, but Walmart does it too. But you can see that Lowe's particularly has a lot of Costa Farms plants. Like this is another Rex Begonia. Um, I love Rex Begonias, the look of them, but I will say the care for them is a little bit tricky because if you get the Rex Begonia leaves, especially the stems wet, they don't like that. It's the same thing with um, with um what is it with African violets? There you go. African violets, they will actually rot up and die. And that's not a good thing, but that's the reason why certain plants are better suited for to be um, bottom watered or um, that's basically it. Some, some plants you can water their, their, you can actually get their leaves wet, but some plants really don't like that. Um, it's the same thing with outdoor plants. And look at that, that is a Mandula pothos. Unfortunately, it has some pests. This one's a better looking Mandula pothos and these are for $7.98. Um, the other one had a bunch of yellow wings. So I don't know if it's just overwatered, underwatered or has spider mites, but it's just a little disappointing to see that these Mandula pothos, and I already know a lot of people have even been searching Mandula pothos it's just sad to see that some of these plants really decline in their health and that's why i do plant shopping videos big box store ones hoping that people will be more um, excited to go to a big box store and buy plants because this one right here is a batina hedra helix and that one is not doing very well i can tell that the health has really declined um, this is a pretty good looking neon pothos right here. Love neon pothos. Um, and then here's another Hedra Helix or an English Ivy or Hedera Helix, however you want to say it. I like saying Hedra Helix. All right, Plan Foldy, say it with me. Hedra Helix. Okay, I will stop with that. I know that some of you guys might find it cringy. I get it. I've read the comments, but I will say hedra helix is here to stay i'm actually gonna do a um a, a t-shirt that says hedra helix is real let me know in the comments if you are gonna rock that t-shirt out that is something that i am eventually gonna try to get on a merch store for plant foldies so check that out but anyways snow white waffle plant beautiful plant and then this is a beautiful syngonia maria what i like about syngonia maria is a dark foliage it's got that chocolate look about it and can you imagine getting the leaves sprayed with some leaf shine or even that neem oil oh my gosh if it's shiny it looks so stunning like look at that i love that as well um syngoniums again easy plant to take care of it's probably my first love and honestly i i have just struggled with syngoniums because i just don't water my plants and that's a problem i need 
to be more consistent on it. Now there's one Syngonium that I have done very well and it's a beautiful variegated Agastanum that I bought from Lauren's Leaves. I'm gonna actually post a picture after I upload this video and tag um, Lauren because she has some amazing plants. And I got a variegated um, Syngonium Batik from Nirvana Guard, um, Nirvana Tropicals. So there are some more of those rare Syngoniums. I do have a beautiful Syngonium um, tricolor red spot um, that I am gonna take cuttings from. I'm gonna probably it so I can get it to be a little bit more full but you can see even at a big box store you can see all of these different types of syngoniums look at how beautiful this pink one is I actually need to get a pink syngonium I'm telling you I love plants and and it's just really exciting to show everybody these daily plant videos um, i rush home to try to get one either edited typically what i do is for these plant shopping videos i will try to film them a, a day ahead edit them that same day after the premiere because i like to get on premieres and interact with you guys and then i go to editing this is an interesting hydra helix or an English ivy, this one, I don't know the plant ID, but notice how the leaves have a different type of texture. They almost look like seashells. This one is a pretty look, nice looking one. And if, if I didn't know how challenging an English ivy is, I would have bought that and collected every single English ivy. Like this one is a Bonnie spider plant, love that as well. Look at that string, like look, look at the, the stripes, the different types of greens. Um, that it has. It's another plant that I am just a huge fan of. It's it's an amazing plant and it's a plant that I definitely like to um, collect. I'm gonna definitely get a spider plant. Sometimes spider plants have that um, that reputation of not having be very beautiful foliage because they're on um, the tips of their leaves start to brown. I think it's because of the watering. Like spider plants definitely need to be watered. Um, with like more not um, tap water or hard water but more purified water or at least that's what i've seen so we'll we'll see what that looks like and then you can see over here we've got a ficus lyrata or a fiddle fig leaf tree we've got a white bird of paradise or some type of bird of paradise now all of these plants that i'm panning over need a lot of bright light we've got some pachira aquatica right over here or money tree plant that one also prefers bright indirect light and then we've got a monstera adansonii here so this is the monstera adansonia wide form for some reason i have not been able to grow a monstera adansonia long term they end up just dying on me and that goes back to show that even though some people say monstera is easy to take care of for some reason mine um, they just don't do well for me and it's a little bit disappointing now so this skin daps is true by moonlight beautiful plant trend in tropicals plant it's a plant that i need to add because Scandapsis trubrii moonlight is an easy to care for plant. They grow like um, pothos. And then we have a bunch of smaller um, ficus lyrata or fiddle fig leaf trees. But as you can see, I'm going to pan away and just show you how full this Lowe's is off of Preston Road in Frisco, Texas. Um, it's one of my favorite ones because they typically get a lot of restocks. And what I like about it is they try to merchandise their plants in a way that's really inspiring. It makes you want to pick up a plant like this one right here. Another um, fiddle fig leaf. This one is for $15.98 in a self-watering planter. So I love that really cool looking plant right there and then we have some raven zz plants in the background regular zz plants and a sea of golden pothos we've got another pachira aquatica or money tree plant here lots of greenery and notice how all of those plants are not necessarily variegated but there's still some type of impact and that's the thing plants make people happy plant foldies you make me happy um, and if you really want to keep supporting me guys, like I said, again, if you made it this far into the video, please make sure you are hitting the like button for this video. Um, I know that a lot of you guys watch this live, but you know, I, all I ask is that you hit the like button, leave a comment for my efforts. You know, it is a little bit of a time consuming process to make these one hour videos. All I ask is that if you can at least hit the like button and leave comments, that would be amazing. And you can see right there, all of these Philanopsis orchids, like I would be tempted to go um, buy a bunch of Philanopsis orchids. I've been good about them. So that's the thing about plant shopping. For me, I do a lot of window plant shopping unless there's just a plant that just says you need me to buy you. And uh, I have seen that, you know, there are certain plants. I will be visiting Green Acres um, Nursery, which is a new location in Melissa, Texas to film that. I'm going back to get a couple of plants particularly a Dracaena warneckii. 
because they had some really good pricing and potentially the variegated alocasia odora it is for hundred dollars and 99 cents so i don't know if i want to spend two hundred dollars on that and then going to pita's planters this week so if you want to know what type of a local plant nurseries i'm going to go to those would be it um, i do big box store plant shopping videos i feel like big box store plant shopping videos either get pushed by youtube and it gets more views but i encourage you guys all to watch the local plant nursery um, videos even if it's not accessible to the area of the country you live at i just want to highlight those so in case you do visit um dallas you can make a whole like plant tourism where you know you 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 go to dallas and spend a day just going to different plant shops i didn't realize based on your comments that there are a lot of nice plants out in dallas and that's what i would love for you guys to see obviously big box stores too i mean these um the this lowe's is actually well kept I love the health of their plants and I love this Philanopsis orchid right here. I haven't really seen a lot of like orange Philanopsis orchids, but look at how beautiful that face of that bloom is. Really exciting to see that. And then these are all for like $24.98. So with Philanopsis orchids, again, they're just really interesting. And you can see how beautiful this bromeliad is right over here. Um, I love bromeliads and look at that, um, that pink. So this is the front part of Lowe's where they typically feature larger foliage plants. I did want to highlight one new discovery I had. Look at these ficus elastica rubies in self-watering planters by Live Trends. So typically I don't see Live Trends um, offering um, 10 inch or 14 inch planters. You can see that they actually have the orchid bark as a top dressing. I thought it was all orchid bark, but it's actually in soil. And then they put orchid bark as um, an actual top dressing. That's really cool. I like that. And I also love the fact that they have self-watering planters, even in larger pots. I tried to lift it, it's a little bit heavy. And then you can see here more Pachira aquatica. I think I wanna get a Pachira aquatica and you can see there's some Dracaena marginatas. We've got a Monstera deliciosa. My two Monstera deliciosa that I repotted in larger planters have already unfurled a bunch of new leaves. So that's exciting. And you can see we've got an Alocasia regal shield right over here. So plant foldies, I hope you enjoyed this big box or plant shopping videos. You already know this week is going to be full of different exciting plant shopping videos. As always, please make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribing to my channel. And this is Richia Grow Folds. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.